My name is uh, Anne Geneviève Marcelin. I'm a virologist uh, in the Pitié Salpêtrière Hospital in France, and I will speak about uh, testing for SARS CoV 2 uh, infection. Here are my disclosures. Um, so, um, coronaviruses repeatedly crossed species barrier. There are four uh, genera that exist alpha, beta, delta, and gamma coronavirus. Uh, bats and rodents are the gene source of most alpha and beta uh, CoV. So to date, this co uh, coronavirus species uh, were known to cause human disease, um, <clears throat> alpha coronavirus and beta coronaviruses, and um, some of them are uh, associated with uh, self-limiting upper respiratory infections. Uh, however, um, others are uh, associated with a severe uh, lower respiratory tract infection with a severe acute respiratory distress syndrome such as uh, SARS-CoV and uh, MERS-CoV. Uh, so in late December uh, 2019, uh, cases of severe pneumonia were reported. They were epidemiologically uh, associated with a seafood market in uh, China, and the uh, unknown etiologic agent was uh, finally identified. Um, so this is uh, SARS-CoV-2. Um, uh, the virus uh, is an enveloped virus with a spike protein that mediated uh, attachment to the host cell. And uh, as you can see, the genome is a positive sense, uh, single-stranded, RNA, um, which is uh, uh, 30 uh, kilobase. Um, the whole genome uh, of the virus has been sequenced, and uh, this uh, genome shows 88% uh, of identity with bat uh, derived uh, coronavirus, 79% uh, with uh, SARS CoV and about 50% uh, with uh, MERSCO. So it is important to know um, about the postulated pathogenesis of uh, this uh, virus. Um, uh, um, after the contact and the transmission of the virus through uh, uh, respiratory droplets and, and contacts, the, the, the virus is mainly located um, in the upper uh, respiratory tract in the nasal cavity and the pharynx at the beginning of the disease. And then the, the virus is going down to the lower respiratory tract and uh, also in the gastrointestinal uh, mucosa. So uh, regarding the state of the, of the disease, is, um, it is very important to, to know where the virus can be uh, to adapt our uh, diagnostic uh, strategy. Uh, so very rapidly, um, a German team from uh, uh, Berlin, uh, Hôpital La Charité, um, has developed um, real-time RT-PCR to uh, detect this novel coronavirus. Uh, they established and validate a diagnostic workflow for this virus screening and a specific confirmation. confirmation. So they, de they develop uh, several uh, primers and probes uh, to amplify uh, different regions uh, in, um, in, uh, the, in this, the N gene uh, part, the E uh, gene part, and the polymerase part. And so the, um, the recommendation uh, was to use uh, first the E gene uh, assay as a first line screening tool, followed by a confirmatory testing with the polymerase uh, gene assay. So uh, many laboratories now uh, used this uh, protocol. And at the beginning, uh, it, um, this, um, this testing was uh, uh, essentially uh, through a manual uh, technique. But now uh, we have also a uh, high throughput uh, machine uh, that allowed to perform um, uh, a lot of tests per day, uh, 100 and so even 1,000 tests per day. So uh, where we can find uh, the, the virus, um, so it essentially in the respiratory uh, specimens and uh, in this uh, retrospective study, including uh, 205 patients, 
uh, 19 percent of them had a severe illness. Uh, in this study, um, the authors um, evaluate the, per, uh, the, the positive uh, PCR test, the percentage of positive tests uh, between different resp respiratory samples. And they showed that uh, the bronchoalveolar leverage fluid specimens uh, showed uh, the, highest, the highest positivity rest with uh, 93%, uh, followed by a sputum uh, in 72% of cases and then uh, the nasal Schwabs uh, with 63%. Uh, uh, as you can see in the pharyngeal Schwabs, only 32% of uh, specimens were, uh, were positive. Uh, they detected a lot, uh, sometimes also some uh, RNA uh, in the faces. So this show that uh, um, the, the lower um, specimens were uh, uh, were more, more uh, sensitive than the upper uh, uh, specimen. Uh, uh, in this uh, retrospective study, including uh, uh, 92 patients, uh, they showed that the peak of the viral load uh, was at five, six days after symptoms here, and that generally uh, sputum showed a higher viral load uh, than, um, than the uh, throat uh, samples. And this has been confirmed in other uh, studies showing that uh, the viral load in sputum is higher than in uh, throat and nasal swabs. So now if we look at the follow-up of the RT-PCRs in infected patients, uh, in this prospective study, including 67 uh, COVID patients, uh, they they, they showed that uh, the median duration of RNA SARS-CoV-2 shedding um, was uh, 12 days uh, for uh, nasopharyngeal uh, Schwabs here, uh, 19 days uh, for sputum, and 18 days uh, in, in, in stool uh, samples. They were also able to uh, detect some uh, positive RNA in uh, urines and, and plasma. However, it's, uh, it's important to, to know if uh, the virus that we detect in, the, in these uh, respiratory samples are uh, uh, infectious viruses or not. So this is a very uh, elegant study uh, published recently in Nature, and they published a detailed uh, virological analysis of nine cases uh, providing proof of uh, active virus replication in upper respiratory, respiratory tract tissues. Uh, indeed, the pharyngeal virus shedding was very high during the first week of symptoms. And uh, interestingly, uh, they showed that infectious virus was isolated in 93% of samples during the first uh, seven days from uh, throat and lung uh, samples, but never uh, after uh, seven days. And uh, very interestingly, they showed that there, are, there was no infectious virus uh, isolated uh, from stool samples. Um, they also showed that the serum conversion occurred after seven days in 50% of patients, uh, 14 days in all, uh, but was not followed by a rapid uh, decline in, in viral load. So this, uh, this study showed that uh, uh, during the first uh, phase of the uh, disease, uh, patients uh, are, uh, are uh, contagious and can uh, transmit the, the virus from the, uh, from the um, respiratory samples. Uh, so now if we look at the uh, relationship between the viral load and uh, disease severity, uh, this prospective study uh, contained in uh, 76 patients um, showed that in an, uh, they followed uh, nasopharyngeal samples from patients. They studied uh, 30 uh, severe cases and 46 mild uh, cases. And uh, um, they, the, the, the viral load was uh, expressed as a CT. Uh, so you, you have to keep in mind that when the CT is uh, high, um, the viral load uh, is, um, is low. So they, they showed that uh, when they compare mi mild and severe cases, 
the mean viral load of severe cases was, uh, was higher uh, than uh, mild cases, uh, 60 times uh, higher than uh, mild cases. And 90% uh, 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 of mild cases were repeatedly tested uh, negative on RT-PCR by uh, 10, uh, 10 days post onset. And by contrast, uh, all severe cases were still tested positive at or beyond day 10 post uh, onset. So similar to SARS-CoV, uh, uh, patients with severe uh, COVID-19 tend to have a high viral load and a long virus uh, shedding uh, period. So uh, beside the, the molecular diagnostic, um, there are a, a lot of hope with uh, sero serological assays. Uh, in this prospective study, including 173 patients with, uh, um, with uh, uh, followed uh, plasma samples, um, the, the authors enrolled patients with confirmed uh, SARS-CoV infection by RT-PCR, and they studied the, uh, the, the total antibodies, uh, IgM and IgG by ELISA. And the assays they use showed a, a good specificity. And uh, they, they, sh they, they showed that the median time of uh, serum conversion in these uh, infected patients uh, was um, 11 days for total antibodies, uh, 12 days for IgM, and 14 days for IgG. Uh, the presence of antibodies um, was less than 40% within first week since onset and then increased to 100% uh, 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 since day 15 after onset for uh, total antibodies. Um, it is interesting to, to this analysis is interesting because they combined uh, uh, RNA and antibody, det antibody detections. Um, and this can um, improve uh, significantly the sensitivity of the diagnosis of COVID, uh, even in the early phase on, um, uh, even in the early phase of one uh, week since, uh, since onset. As you can see, uh, when combining uh, uh, RNA plus antibodies, uh, the sensitivity uh, is quite uh, very good, uh, around 100%. So, uh, in conclusions, um, um, the diagnosis uh, of um, SARS-CoV-2 infection is mainly done by a real-time RT-PCR. It's recommended in symptomatic patients um, with uh, respiratory, on res respiratory uh, specimens. We have no um, um, various uh, techniques to do that, uh, either manual or uh, with high throughput systems. Uh, but we have to, to, to keep in mind that the sensitivity depends uh, on the quality of the type of samples and the disease, disease stage. Um, and we have approximately 30% uh, of false negative. So there, there are a lot of uh, hope with the serological assays. And many, many tests are under development. Uh, either RAPID or uh, ELISA, but we absolutely need for a performance evaluation of this test uh, with EGA, IGA, M or G. Uh, several studies showed that the median time of serocovation is about uh, 14 uh, days, but we don't know yet uh, what is the persistence of these uh, antibodies. And there are some remaining questions, for example, um, uh, the, the, what is the time of seroconvention between uh, uh, severe symptomatic or post-symptomatic patients? Um, there are some data suggesting that maybe post-symptomatic patients have, have longer uh, time uh, to seroconversion. We don't not we don't have yet some uh, a lot of data about the neutralization of these uh, antibodies and their capacity to protect from uh, from uh, infection. 
Um, however, uh, there, there are some indications that could be uh, very interesting for the use of these uh, serological assays, of course, uh, for epidemiological studies, uh, but also um, for uh, it could be maybe interesting to combine uh, this test with RT-PCR for acute infection diagnosis. Uh, and it's, it would be also interesting to, uh, to use this test for uh, past infection diagnosis, for, for example, in asymptomatic patients and uh, also for healthcare uh, workers. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention and uh, we will discuss uh, that uh, with pleasure after.